YouTube, what the heck is up? It's your boy Joey P, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to make your footage more cinematic. I uh, I think it's my first video not wearing a hat. Kind of weird. I don't know if I like it yet, but had an interview today, had to look somewhat presentable, so that's why we're here. You ever watch a movie and you're like, wow, I wish my footage could look like that, or how do they get to do that look? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't have the six figure cameras that a camera crew does, or the time and effort and all that that they put in, but I'm going to show you how I do it on my own. Now, I've got two methods we're going to talk about today. One, is going to be the physical non-editing method and two is going to be in post-production. Now, what I mean by physical is this right here. This is the Prism FX Dream lens filter that I've been using for right around a month or so. Now, what does it do? What is the point of this? Well, let me show you. Well, this isn't the best place. You know, I it could have been done during like a sunrise, sunset, that kind of idea. You get the idea. You can tell by the light back there, it kind of blooms uh, the light effect around it. It creates this hazy, dreamy, I mean, cinematic look is what, it, is what it does, honestly. Essentially what it's doing is it's taking that super harsh edge that a lot of modern cameras have nowadays. A lot of modern cameras are super tack sharp and that's great for pictures and things like that, but when you're shooting footage and you get a lot of unwanted details within your footage, it's, just, it's not a great look. You know, this helps take that harsh edge, softens it up, softens your highlights. I know it sounds ridiculous to say, oh, something's too sharp, but I mean, there's a reason that a lot of people go for that filmic, you know, 80s retro, everything kind of soft and hazy kind of look. Here's a couple example shots that I took. Honestly, the double tree is actually one of my favorite pictures that I've taken. I will probably be getting that frame to put up on the walls. As you can tell, still very bare. Haven't gotten a lot of lights. We will get to that soon though, I promise. There are some pros and cons with using this method and especially this filter. Some pros for me are it's a very non-time consuming method. I obviously you saw thread my filter on. I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about, you know, masking anything in or out. I can just throw it on. I'm ready to go. I don't have to, there's no, there's no post-production for me. It's, it's good to go right out of camera. There's a plethora of filters out there that kind of achieve this look. I picked this one just because A, financially made a lot of sense. It was only about $95 and I got the biggest thread size that they make because that is what my lens requires. Uh, some of the other ones that do this effect, you know, they can get up there in price. They can get right around four or $500 and I just, I couldn't justify it. So I got this one. I honestly don't have any, any uh, complaints right now about it. I know some people say this effect is a little too strong for them, which I completely understand. You know, like I said, there's a plethora of options out there. If this one doesn't fit you, I'm sure there is one that will. I'm not sponsored by Prism FX, so this is totally just my opinion. There's no, I know, I wish I was getting paid to, to talk about it, but I'm not. So far, really like it. I've got some photo shoot ideas that I want to do with it, and I honestly think this could be, you know, kind of have a special place in my bag. The cons of using this method is, you know, using a filter method instead of doing it in post is, your footage is your footage is your footage, you know, you're stuck with it. If you know, if something if it's too strong or doesn't, it's not strong enough, strong, not strong enough, you can kind of fix and post, but not really. But if it's too strong I and mean, you're stuck with it, you got to go reshoot. That's why it's important to make sure that your setup is spot on. You make sure everything is in place that you want it to look because after you shoot it, you're really not going to be able to change anything. Another con, you know, as much as I talk about is it is a cheaper filter. Uh, the con is it does cost money to do so, whereas if you do something in post-production, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free, besides obviously the software, but there are free softwares out there as well. It really comes down to A, kind of the look that you're going for, and B, if you want to save the time of having to work on it in post, make sure you're researching all the filters, seeing which one kind of fits your eye the best. This filter in particular does have a sub, uh, subtle version of it, so you can go for that if you don't want something that's as strong. But don't be afraid to go do research and find something that fits you and your footage perfectly. Now, I'm going to send you on over to the guy on the computer. Let's go over there. How you doing? What's going on? That guy's trying to sell you something. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm simply going to show you how to either do this in Premiere Pro or in Photoshop. My first example is going to be Photoshop because I think it's a little bit easier and the settings kind of transfer over either way. So what you do in Photoshop is going to work in Premiere Pro and vice versa. So for post-production, this is an effect that I have seen and done a bunch. It's called the Orton effect, and let me just go through it, show you it's a pretty simple process, and it just helps kind of create that dreamy, uh, hazy look that you're getting with the filter, but I'm not going to make you spend money. That other guy definitely will. So what we're going to do here is you're going to take your base image. This is one that I had shot during a sunset. It's got a little bit of post-processing already done to it, but it has no special effects or anything. This is actually you know, what the picture ended up looking like. So what you're going to do is you're going to control J, you're going to create a copy of your original image, 
and then you're going to go up to your filter you're going to go to your blur go to your gaussian blur and then usually you they say to do it for how many megapixels are in the camera but my camera is 45 and once i do 45 it kind of starts to get I'm a little blown out on the blur so i usually go between 25 or 20 to 30 right around 25 usually so now what you do is you have your top layer we are call this our blur layer and then you have this and then your bottom one what you'll do is you'll go to your blending modes change it to either lighten or screen depending on the type of effect or which one fits best for your image this one here lighten actually fits really well now as you can see this is super you know super hazy super dreamy I mean, this you do not want to do so what you'll do is either you can mask this mask it flip invert your mask and paint in the areas that you want uh to be a little bit more dreamy uh, i mean nothing too crazy i'll take it and do like i've got my flow set at 46 even that might be a little much i might go 20 here kind of paint over it yeah that that one works a little bit better or uh the other way of doing it is to just delete your mask take your opacity play with it that way uh the mask gives you a little bit more control over it this is kind of just you're stuck with whatever the opacity ends up looking like this is i mean like i said this transfers over to premiere pro i will pull up some footage for you and we can do it there as well but this is a method that works very well for post-production that you don't have to worry about actually having a filter over your lens so here is the premiere pro drone footage we're going to be taking that like i said it's gonna be a very similar effect to what we did in photoshop so we're going to take a copy take that one go up to your oh, my effects are right here so gaussian blur throw that on there you're gonna take this turn it up to probably 20 like a little big third eh. 28 ish right about there and then you are going to take the blending mode of this go to lighten as you can see it kind of creates that hazy glow and you just mess around with your opacity kind of find something that suits you i usually sit right around the range of 25 opacity all the way up to like 40 depending on how strong i want it so we'll go 30 we'll go 40 here so now as you can see here is the footage with and without you can kind of see it just adds that the edge is right around here and here and then when you have motion just has that more glowy uh effect to it more cinematic like is uh is what it is i mean and that is uh that is your tutorials on how to do it within photoshop and premiere pro as well as doing it within camera we're gonna throw it back to the guy with the filter and thank you that was our local resident Photoshop and Premiere Pro expert. There is the two ways of how you can get your footage to look more cinematic, you know, that dreamy kind of hazy look. These, uh, personally, I, like I said, I have the filter. I'm really loving it, so I couldn't recommend it enough. But if you don't want to go ahead and get yourself a filter, you hit now have a little bit of a tutorial on how to make your footage look that way in post. The biggest thing as well is going to be color correcting your footage to match the mood and tone of your video overall. So be sure to be doing that as well. Other than that, I hope you guys learned something here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic day. Peace, love, smooches. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.